الحمد لله رب العالمين نحمده ونستعين به ونتوكل عليه والصلاة والسلام على خير خلقه أجمعين حبيب إله العالمين نبينا محمد المصطفى صلى الله عليه وعلى أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين المطهرين المكرمين قال الله العظيم في كتابه الكريم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الله لطيف بعباده يرزق من يشاء وهو القوي العزيز أمنا بالله صدق الله العلي العظيم Respected viewers, brothers and sisters Salaman alaykum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh One of the things that we continuously seek in our lives and we wish to attain and we look for as human beings from the beginning of time until the end of time people are eager to acquire and to attain is sustenance what is known in uh, Islamic teachings as rizq. Uh, it's an important area uh, and it's uh, one that has been mentioned in approximately 123 ayat of the Holy Quran and perhaps tens or hundreds of narrations of the glorious Ma'sumin, the Ahl al Bayt, alayhum as salam. Uh, this emphasis on it highlights its importance, no doubt and how uh, you and I uh, must understand it uh, wholeheartedly and at the same time holistically rather than maybe uh, appreciating some uh, aspects of it only which may be limited. The first thing to mention when the word rizq is uttered we often hear or come to our minds the idea of wealth Okay, uh, sustenance, how much I have attained, how much I have received. But on closer examination, the Quran reveals that anything we obtain from the Almighty subhanahu wa ta'ala in reality is actually rizq. Sustenance is whatever Allah wa ta'ala bestows upon us is considered to be uh, rizq. This includes things like children, ilm, well, health, uh, security, uh, strength, many, many things. Anything that uh, we find is a blessing, the, 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 the body that we have, yes. The ability to see, the ability to hear, the ability to speak, the ability to smell. These are all forms of rizq from the Almighty subhanahu wa ta'ala. Um, Allah wa ta'ala has guaranteed this rizq upon all of his creation. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim in Surah Al-Hud verse number 6 Allah wa ta'ala says وَمَا مِن دَابَّةٍ فِي الْأَرْضِ إِلَّا عَلَى اللَّهِ رِزْقُهَا There is nothing on this earth uh, that except that the Almighty guarantees its rizq of course. He is the creator. He knows what uh, his creation needs to survive and therefore he provides the causes for things to happen. He, he is, of course, musabbibul asbab. Therefore, with no exception, uh, every single particle of his creation is included in his mercy. Uh, Imam Ali alayhi salam, uh, in a beautiful narration, as we are here discussing how the Ahl al-Bayt alayhi salam themselves were the beacon of light in terms of the akhlaq and mannerism and the etiquettes of uh, many aspects of our lives. When we discuss the subject of rizq in a beautiful narration, Amir al muminin peace and blessings be upon him, said that those who give up seeking rizq uh, should remember th the three stages that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not abandon them in their lives. You know, sometimes some people say, yeah, Allah will guarantee the rizq, but he is not looking after me now. You know, they use this as an excuse that, look, where is God? Why is He not providing? Why is He not sustaining me now? Imam alayhi salam says, remember, the womb of the, when you were in the womb of the mother, Allah ta'ala did not forget you then. Remember that after your birth, when the mother is providing you with the milk, the milk is from the Almighty subhanahu wa ta'ala. He did not forget you then. And remember the time of childhood, you had parents who gave you everything you need. So, the one who has provided you all this time will also provide you 
at other times during your life too. But it's evident upon us that despite the fact that the Almighty subhanahu wa ta'ala is, is guaranteeing this rizq upon us, there is a need for us to strive to, to uh, attain it and to attain more. So the idea of talabul halal, according to the narration of the Ahlul Bayt, talabul halal faridatun ala kulli Muslim wa Muslima, seeking halal, seeking that rizq is something which is obligatory upon every Muslim and male and female. Al ibadatu sab'oon juz'an afdaluha talabul halal, that uh, worship is 70 parts. The greatest part of it is seeking halal rizq, is seeking sustenance which is uh, permissible. Because of course, sometimes people seek to fulfill their needs illegitimately through means which are not acceptable in Sharia law, and this uh, which would denounce, uh, would denote rather transgression, and something which is forbidden within the teachings of the religion of Islam. Uh, it is about putting the effort to seek the rizq, isn't it? Once an Ansari, somebody who is a a supporter, helper of the Holy Prophet, complained to the Prophet. He said, you know, I'm not getting the rizq. I'm poor. Allah is not uh, helping me. The Prophet of Islam said to him, Sallallahu Alaihi wa he said to him, what do you have at home? So he said, go and bring me. What do you have? Whatever you have. So he went and bought a pestle and mortar. Uh, the Prophet uh, then, then said to him, you know, go and sell these. He sold them. He got two dirhams. The Prophet said, use one to buy food and another to buy an axe. So he went, he bought the axe, and he bought some food in order to feed himself. And with the axe he went and he sought work. After 15 days his situation got much, much better. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was trying to tell him, look, be positive, have a good outlook, and seek your own rizq. Allah wa ta'ala with the effort will bestow his mercy upon you. Um, this idea of staying at home and not working or not seeking that risk or waiting for it to come is a, is a, is a problematic idea. Uh, Imam Sadiq alayhi salam was seen by somebody who, you know, was of this idea that I want to sit at home and I will attain the risk. Allah will give me the risk and the sustenance. He said to that individual, La or that man said to Imam Sadiq, He says, I will stay, sit at home, I will pray, I will fast, I will worship God, and I know that my rizq will come to me. Imam Sadiq says to him, this is one of the three whose du'as will not be answered. The supplications will not be heard by the Almighty subhanahu wa ta'ala, will not be responded to. Therefore, what the idea that is projected is that no, let's seek this rizq. But how do we understand this? So, Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salam in Nahju Balagha talks about rizq being two types, a rizq or rizqan. رزق تطلبه ورزق يطلبك. There is a minimum and a maximum. Two types of رزق. رزق رزق that seeks you and رزق that you seek it. Yes. So the idea is that when people are complaining that they're not getting enough رزق and the situation is not improving, is Allah سبحانه وتعالى has a measure for each and every individual. Sometimes we are told to seek it. As long as we seek it, we gain and we obtain that which the Almighty wants for us. If we want more, we should seek it, but sometimes we don't get it. Why? Because Allah knows what is good for us. There are some people, when they have too much, they unfortunately become uh, too... Uh, Despond uh, too uh, lazy, and then they start getting away from faith and religion. They start to, you know, uh, become 
too arrogant sometimes, for example. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't want that to happen, of course. He knows it will happen and therefore doesn't give for some people. And likewise for others, He might give because He knows if they are too poor, they might lose away from or they go away from faith. So the idea is to experience and go through contentment, um, it is of the utmost importance that this is uh, observed. What we are told is that we need to have trust in God. Uh, we, we need to observe that He will only give what is good for me. And as long as we know that He will provide for me, there isn't anything to worry about. That's why in the du'as of the Ahl al-Bayt, the du'a of Imam Sahib al-Asr wa zaman ajjal Allah ta'ala faraju al-Sharif, du'a al-Iftitah, we recite, وَلَعَلَّ الَّذِي أَبْطَعَ عَنِّي هُوَ خَيْرٌ لِي لِعِلْمِكَ بِعَاقِبَةُ الْأُمُورِ The one who is holding back from me is better for me because he has knowledge of what is best for me, what is the best outcome. Now, when it comes to rizq, how do we increase the chances of us attaining more or getting more? This is an important area. How do we... Um, somehow do certain deeds which potentiate and increase the rizq that we attain from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. First of all, we are told that a prerequisite that will help is taqwa, being God conscious. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. May yattaqillah yaj'al lahu makhraja wa yarzuqhu min haythu la yahtasib. Anybody who observes God consciousness, the more they observe, Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala says, will provide a way out for them and grant them risk from that which they did not necessarily anticipate. Sometimes, you know, some people, they say, SubhanAllah, I never expected this to happen. Or an opportunity came up, or a magnificent door of God's mercy opened up. Often that is associated with taqwa. Allah wa ta'ala says this synonymous, مَنْ يَتَّقِ اللَّهُ وَيَصْبِرُ so there is the element of sabr in it as well. Uh, not only do we have patience, but also we have God consciousness and the avenues open up. Therefore, this taqwa, if it is observed, it helps. At the same time, what unfortunately impacts this whole process negatively is sins. And we find uh, in the dua known as Dua Kumail from Imam Ali alayhi salam, Imam says, Ya Allah, uh, forgive me the sins that stop the rizq from coming. And the Quran tells us that Prophet Nuh alayhi salam would say to his community, قَالَ يَا قَوْمِ اسْتَغْفِرُوا رَبَّكُمْ إِنَّهُ كَانَ غَفَّارًا يُرْسِلِ السَّمَاءَ عَلَيْكُمْ مِدْرَارًا وَيُمْدِدْكُمْ بِأَمْوَالٍ وَبَنِينَ This is a beautiful demonstration of how the Qur'an is full of wonderful prescriptions to increase one's wealth and sustenance and so on. And not only wealth and sustenance, any form of risk. People want children, they're not getting children. People want success in their businesses and so on and so forth. Uh, istighfar is of the utmost importance, seeking forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, somebody came to Imam al-Hasan al-Mujtaba, salawatullahi wa salamu alayhi, and said to him, Ya ibn Rasulillah, I want to increase of my rizq. Imam says, istighfarillah, seek forgiveness from Allah, istighfar. Somebody came to him and said, I want to be blessed with children. Imam alayhi salam said, istighfarillah, and so on. So people said, oh, but you keep telling them istighfarillah. He says, this is in the Quran. يَا قَوْمِ اسْتَغْفِرُوا رَبَّكُمْ إِنَّهُ كَانَ غَفَّارًا غَفَّارًا is an excessive uh, description of somebody who is oft forgiving. If you and I realize that the sins are impediments, we, we practice istighfar, Allah says, يُرُسِلِ السَّمَاءَ عَلَيْكُمْ مِدْرَارًا The heavens will open up for you. وَيُمْدِدْكُمْ بِأَمْوَالٍ وَبَنِينَ He will grant you wealth and He will grant you children. That is the promise of the Almighty. وَلَوْ أَنَّ أَهْلَ الْقُرَىٰ آمَنُوا وَاتَّقَوْ لَفَتَحْنَا عَلَيْهِمْ بَرَكَاتٍ مِّنَ السَّمَاءِ وَالْأَرْضِ If the people were to believe and to practice God consciousness, we will open up for them the barakah, the blessings of the heavens and the earth. That's very, very 
important. Uh, and Imam Ali alayhi salam in a famous narration says, increase in istighfar will bring about the risk. That's number one. Number two, uh, enjoining good relationships with kinsfolk, with the, those who are considered to be the family. Salatul Rahim, no doubt, will increase rizq, will open up many avenues and opportunities. This involves helping them, asking about them, visiting them, avoiding conflict, avoiding, you know, breaking relations with the kinsfolk, the Salatul Rahim. Uh, doing whatever we can to assist them, to help them, and so on and so forth. Trying to bring people together as well, Islahu Dhatul Bain, especially amongst the family members. Sadly, sometimes, you know, problems occur between family members, and uh, uh, this potentiates further, further escalation, further problems that may happen. And uh, if we work hard, to restore relations between family members that will help immensely and inshallah ta'ala will be of benefit as far as rizq is concerned. Another area is what is known as Salatul Layl. This is the prayers of the night. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam informs Amir al-Mu'mineen, Ya Ali, alayka bi Salatul Layl. Ya Ali, alayka bi Salatul Layl. Alayka bi Salatul Layl. Emphasizing the importance of Salatul Layl. Not because, of course, it's a message to Imam Ali alayhi salam, but rather it's a message to you and I about the benefits of this great act of worship that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given uh, to us as a gift, really. You know, the Almighty subhanahu wa ta'ala is so merciful, so kind that, you know, uh, these opportunities are given to us and sadly, sometimes we don't utilize them. Imam al-Sadiq sallallahu wa sallam alayhi says, Laysa minna man lam yusalli salatul layl. The one who does not say, sal uh, perform Salatul Layl is not one of us. And we are told of the great benefits such as, for example, it illuminates the grave in Alam al barzakh It increases the visitation of the Mala'ika. It illuminates the house in which Salatul Layl is performed for the people of the heavens. Numerous benefits in this world and, of course, in Akhirah. Uh, Imam alayhi salam, one of the imma, was asked by an individual once uh, for some food. Imam told him, do you pray Salatul Layl? The individual said yes. He said, he who claims that they perform Salatul Layl whilst hungry is a liar. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. Can you imagine? Think about it. Imam alayhi salam would say that if you perform Salatul Layl, it brings the rizq. You can't claim to be performing Salatul Layl and complaining of uh, poverty because Allah Taala will give and grant and such is the power of this magnificent act of worship. Another way in which rizq is obtained and the wealth is increased is marriage because it's a bl blessed union, it's a relationship which Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala Himself has praised Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim wa ankihu al-ayama minkum wa salihina min imaikum in yakunu fuqara'a yughnihim allahu min fadlih Now we are told that in yakunu fuqara'a Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will alleviate their poverty after marriage the sustenance is, will be from the Almighty subhanahu wa ta'ala, from His eternal bliss and from His uh, generosity and magnanimity. Giving sadaqah and charitable donations is also what a means by which rizq is intensified. Istanzilu rizqa bis sadaqah. Make sure that you obtain more rizq through sadaqah, that which purifies us. Uh, somebody narrates that Imam Sadiq once said to his son, Imam, uh, uh, or actually his son Muhammad, he had a son by the name of 
uh, Muhammad. He said to him, have you got any money for sadaqa? And the, his son said, yes. He said, how much money? He said, 40 dinars. He said, give it. After 10 days, narration says this person attained 400 or 4,000 rather dinars. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala returned it to him. So uh, much, much, many, many, many folds. At least 100 times more he obtained. Other means we are uh, told that we will in, uh, have the sadaqa, uh, sorry, the rizq increased is by listening to the adhan, uh, cleansiness, trustworthiness, saying the truth, sincerity, being thankful are all listed as important qualities from the narrations of the Ahl al-Bayt, peace be upon them, that truly help with the attaining of the uh, Sadaq of the rizq. And what we must do is try to avoid certain things which minimize the rizq or limit it or reduce it. As we said, sins is one. Another, more specifically, is what is known as uquq al walidain to be disobedient to one's parents. We are told this is problematic. Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala says in the Holy Quran, وَقَضَى رَبُّكَ أَلَّا تَعْبُدُوا إِلَّا إِيَّهِ وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala commands uh, the believers, the people, not to worship anyone other than Him and to be kind and respectful to one's parents. Sadly, in the Western world we see this day and age, that there is a tendency to disrespect one's parents, to belittle their status, to, you know, when they get older, when the individual themselves gets into adulthood, to, you know, neglect their parents, to mistreat them. Sadly, this is often seen, which is very much denounced in Islamic teachings. Islamic law emphasizes highly the role of the parents, a the importance that the parents play in the education and the correct upbringing be, but see how they should be honored and respected, even by the way, if they're non-Muslim, even by the way, if they do things which are haram, we are told that we are not allowed to mistreat them. Yes, we can disobey them if it is uh, something which is uh, against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's teachings, but there should be continuous effort to uh, respectfully treat them and if God forbid some people deliberately uh, misapply their behavior or uh, disrespect their parents then it just could be a reason why their rizq is limited. Therefore taking all this into consideration we find that the subject is of great importance and Allah wa ta'ala through the teachings of the Quran and the wonderful examples of the Ahl al-Bayt alayhum as salam have presented us, has presented us with ways in which we can look at this particular subject uh, as comprehensively as possible. But of course there are other ways, other means to examine the subject as well. And we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bestow the light of the Ahl al-Bayt into our hearts, the love of the Ahl al-Bayt into our hearts and for us to put into practice their teachings and their recommendations. And if it is good for us to increase our rizq and for us to obtain qana'a, contentment, whatever Allah gives us, we are happy with. And uh, we work in accordance with submission towards um, his teachings and uh, his instructions. And wa akhiru da'wana. أن الحمد لله رب العالمين وصل الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين.